Hey, what's going on traders? This is Talent2303. I am bringing you another strategy build video today. I'm going to do this from start to finish. You'll be able to see me go through the entire thing. You'll see a shorter version of the strategy on my Talent2303 trading channel where you could just see what the strategy does and then you can import it from the community browser on Trade Lab. I'm not making promises about the actual win rate of this strategy. I'm just showing you the possibilities that trade lab offers also i want to remind you that trade lab is free if you sign up for the BitGet unlimited account. So if you trade exclusively with BitGet, you get Trade Lab absolutely free and that unlimited bots, unlimited strategies, unlimited everything. And you can copy these strategies that I'm showing you in the videos and run them for yourself, make changes, copy all my templates on there. If you do not want to use BitGet or you want to use BitGet along with other exchanges, you can choose the other option and that's still only $49 a month for unlimited bots, unlimited alerts, unlimited everything. You can still copy all the strategies on the community browser or come up with your own and keep them a secret for yourself. So today I am going to do a strategy by Trade IQ. The description says 80% win rate, buy, sell, blah, blah, blah. He tried a strategy by somebody else. It didn't work as advertised, which is normal from what I'm seeing. And then he made improvements from it. So we're going to skip the initial one and see if his improvements actually worked. So for this strategy, I already took notes. Uh, I will share the link to the video in the description below so you can watch that too, you get more of an explanation. But basically we're gonna use the black flag indicator, UT bot alerts, and BA historical volatility percentile and SMA. So here's the different changes to the indicators, uh, you're gonna wanna go in and do that before you make any alerts. Uh, we're also gonna add the price closes indicator. So I am going to go to trading view. I've already put the black flag and UT bots alerts on the chart. Uh, put the historical volatility percentile on here. For this strategy, to take a short, you want the cloud red price to be under the cloud be a sell signal and then you want the histogram down here to be either yellow or orange and then also be above the MA. Um, I was trying to figure out how that works and what I discovered by looking over here at the data window is that the histogram is yellow from 70 to 79 and it is orange from 80 to 89 and then it turns red so, and anything below 70 is blue. so that's what we're going to use for our rules we're going to make a data alert for this i'm going to run you through how to do that but we are also going to add the price closes indicator that i like to use to track price and we're going to also use that or actually we're going to we're going to need this and Swing highs and lows. Actually, I'm not sure if we're going to need price closes yet, but we'll see. But we are going to add the swing highs and lows. By Matsu Bex. So we will make this a little smaller. So longs, opposite of shorts. We're going to do this on Bitcoin. Get rid of this because we don't need it. So... We get a long signal and we want, yeah, we will need price closes. So we want the price to be above the green cloud. And we, let's see, let's find one. Okay. So here. Price is above the green cloud. We also have yellow. Let's see. This would have worked. This line. Just testing out another strategy that didn't really seem to work, so I wanted to try this one. A long position. This one. It's okay. This would have been a no-go. 
long on this candle. So it'd be at the top. Our stop loss. Let's see here. Reasons. Swing low would have been right here. Hopefully. Uh, and then we do one five times risk. So as long as this is the swing low that actually printed last, we'd have to actually watch it, but that should be a win. And let's look for a sell. This would have entered. Oh no, it would have been blue. See, everything's been going up lately, so the cells are tough. Let's see. These are all Bitcoin's just been on the rise lately. Uh and we gotta go back in time for a cell signal. Now I'll take it even if it's bad right now. There we go. No, that looks great. Okay, there we go. Here is a cell. So close this candle. Swing high is right there. Yeah. All right, that actually would have been a winner too. Okay. Kind of understand the rules. Hopefully, doesn't look like we're going to get very many sell signals. We'll see about the buys. But the whole point of this is to see how you can use Trade Lab to actually set up a strategy yourself. So we're going to have to make a data, a couple data alerts for this strategy. And let's see. Here we, go. Here we are right now. Okay. We'll see. It looks like we're coming back above the cloud. Maybe we can catch a long here by the time we finish this strategy. So to build this, we're going to go into Trade Lab. We're going to create a new strategy. If you have been watching my uh, videos in the past, uh, we're going to make a couple variables first, but I'm going to name this first. Let's see what we want to call this. Uh, for so. Screw it. We'll just call it this, even though I think his uh, new one is supposedly 68%. Again, I'm not telling you that this is going to work or not. I'm just showing you how to build it. Okay. So that's what we're going to call it for now. We are going to create two different variables so we can make this strategy unique. So we're going to automatically add to and this template will be available for you on the community browser when I'm done. So we're gonna make label time frame. We are gonna make sure these are read write only or read only show and setup. So and then we save these. Okay.
So, and we're going to save this quick, real quick, just to make sure that it's there. We are going to go back into our 80% setup, and now we are going to start creating alerts and variables. So, different alerts we are going to need. We're going to need a couple data alerts in our rules. So we're going to need to track the black flag data, the volatility data, price closes, swing high and low. Basically going to need a data alert for everything. So let's just start with a black flag because we are there. So what we're going to, let's see. UT bot alerts, this is just buy and sell, so we don't need a data alert for this. Here is black flag. So we need to make sure that the price is in between, or not in between cloud. Let's see if that works. Fib levels. It's trailing stop. Let's and then next. Oh, that's this down here. We need to figure out what's the what the top line is, which I believe is going to be the trailing stop, and what our bottom line here is. This is a two. I believe that's going to be Fib one. Okay, so we need to know that the price is above trailing stop in Fib 1, I believe, and then also we need to know which one is on top of the other. So Fib 1, let's write this down or type it out so we know Black, black, you be green. Fib one, but greater than trailing black flag. Fib one, okay. Then, so, okay, for, go back to my, when, you bought, cloud is green, so this is, cloud green, price to be above it so price needs to be above or below so for price needs to be above fib one so just above this <clears throat> Mm -hmm. 
price. Big one. And then we need the histogram here. These are basically our entry rules. Now we get to build data alerts. So let's build our data alerts and create some variables. So we're going to need black flag. I think we really need only need trailing stop and fib one. So uh, let's create a new alert. We are going to add a couple fields. Three to be exact. We're going to change this to label. Change this strategy variable. Label. Time frame, it looks like I got a double up in here, and then we're going to need, well, it's, it's called, it. well, what is going to be trailing slap. be a number number both of these will be dynamic because they're going to change let's find out plot numbers we're going to use so if you haven't been through one of my other videos uh, you, the, you if you want to find out where the data from these indicators are going into you got to go to the third little button down here and you'll get all your values right here. You'll see, let me make sure I got all my stuff turned on here. So we know which plot number we really have. That way we don't screw this. up. So for trailing stop, uh, the plot numbers in the indicators always start at zero. So trailing stop will be zero. This one is one. And fib one is two. All we need out of here is plot zero and plot two. So we're going to come over here. We're going to do plot numbers. This is one word in there. Just be consistent. So this is plot zero. This is plot two. This is how we're going to get our data in here. Now, also, in order for this to populate in our strategy, we need it to be constantly looking at something in trading view. So we're going to make an alert. What is this called? It's not actually called black flag. And then our alert options. Greater than, we'll do trailing stop. Greater than, I like to do negative. And once per minute. So, make an alert for trailing stop. Five. Here's where I like to put the instructions for, oh. On five minute time frame.
Okay. So trailing okay. stop. Negative five, and we'll do this once per minute just so it's always tracking. Black flag data, we got Fib 1. Okay, we're going to save this. Now, for this to populate something, we're going to need variables for that. So we're going to need two more. Trailing stop. And Fib 1. These are going to be numbers. And we want to save them. And we'll go ahead and X out. We've got two time frames. We're going to get rid of one of those. And make sure this is in there. All right, Fib 1 trailing stop. Go ahead and make the alert just so we can see that data is actually populating. So let's go to strategy seven. We'll do this now. I am going to pick it. We can do this on DTC. SDT. Label, we'll call this. And so we'll do this data alert right now. I already got this pulled up. So here we're going to put our web up. And all you have to do to add this in, in the alert instructions is click on these. So we'll go black flag down. Paste it. And So we should be getting this information into our strategy pretty quick. That one is done. We'll check our variables here in another minute or so and see if we've got anything. Next one we're going to is ET bot alerts. That'll be our cell. Buy and sell signal. So we'll need volatility data. And we are going to need the histogram and the MA So there's the line. No, zero line we don't really need. We do need, we need the SMA and the histogram. <clears throat> so again, this is gonna be plot zero and then plot two. So we'll do HP. Gonna change our value here. We're going to use HVP histogram. We'll just call it histogram. Same plot. So we'll do the same thing. I think it's the other plots are greater than. Just do negative five. I don't think nope, the bottom is zero. Okay. So we'll do an alert over. Yes.
negative 5. Greater than negative 5. Time frame, we've got plots, we've got our names. Okay. We are going to create some more variables. Two. This will do a histogram. We'll do an SF. Numbers. Save. Exit. We've got this going. We'll just go ahead and set up our alerts right now. So this is going to be a different webhook. So we're going to change that in here. We're going to click on this. Put it in our alert name. Message. Okay. And so we can see if these two are actually working already. We're going to drag and drop our black flag data over here in order for these to work because of, I've got symbol here. Gonna have to change this to strat strategy trade setting symbol. You are not gonna have to do this if you copy my template from the community browser because I'm doing it for you right now. This is just if you were gonna copy the way I do things and then make your own strategy. Change this to strategy variable label. Strategy variable print. Then we are going to set strategy variable. trailings equal to custom alert trailings. And set strategy variable fib1 equal custom alert fib1. And remove these from here because they don't need to be there. And because we're going to track this throughout the trade and copy this to the other side. If you've never watched one of my videos before, the blue side is our uh, alert data that Trade Lab is looking for prior to getting into a trade. The orange side, the exit rules, are what Trade Lab is looking at while you're in a trade. Uh, so you could use this for different take profits and, and stuff, but you, you want to have the variables constantly updating. So we're going to do the same thing with our volume and change this symbol to variable label, little time frame. Instagram, let's get some alert. Okay, sometimes in order for this to show up, we got to save and come back in. So now we can go to custom alert, Instagram. And set the variable. SMA, custom alert, SMA. Going to do these. And we're going to copy that to the other side. Now our variable should be up. And they are. So we already have FIB1 data and trailing stop data. So this is what is in our data window over here. Trailing stop. Okay. So now, other data we need 
We need price closes data. We're going to swing high and low data. Let's do swing high and low first. This one's a little more tricky, but I will show you how we do this. So we're going to create the alert. Swing high, low data. Create a new template. So if you look over here, we have two swing high, low one, swing high, low, or swing high one, swing high two, swing low one, swing low two. We need these numbers every time they populate, which is not all the time. So we have to make our alerts correspond with that. So we'll call this swing high data. Swing high low data. We are going to you know, I wonder if I forgot to do these dynamic over there. We'll go back and check that alert here in a second. Make sure that it's coming in correctly. Uh, strategy variable. Variable time frame. Okay. So here we're going to need swing I one. Swing low one. Two. Low two. These are going to be numbers. We're going to use the plot number. Let's look in our data window. Swing high one is zero one. Swing low one is directly under that, so it's plot three. And this will be four. And I don't know if you can hear the wind here. It is crazy. Four. One. Now, in order to get this data to come through, we are going to alert on a number that is constantly updating so we could do lower high. So high Alert for lower high. So this will constantly be updating. So lower high. Negative five. And we'll do this one once per bar close. because we want to make sure that lower high is set and we're not putting data in that's repainting. And we're going to save this real quick, quick while I'm thinking about it. We're going to make sure we did this correctly. Plot number. Okay. That was. So for variables for this because there's two different swing highs two different swing lows we're going to need both of those to populate an actual swing high and swing low variable so we're going to make six variables two three six so we're going to do swing high one uh, 
I too. Swing low. Low two. Then we're gonna do. Right now, I'm just hoping my trampoline's not blowing away. So we've got one and two, and then the actual swing high and swing low. These will all be numbers. We're going to save them all. Save. Okay, those are in here. We're going to save this. Quit just to make sure it shows up when we make our alerts. Percent. Set this. I'm going to show you how to get that data to those variables now. We're going to go back to our alerts and we're going to we'll create it in trading view first so we'll just follow our instructions that we wrote here so we're going to go swing high low create an alert oh. going to lower high negative five for bar close this will update every five minutes Sometimes it may not, it, this could take a while depending on where we're at. So if we want this to trade prior to it updating again, we'll just add that into the variable. I'll show you how to do that also. So we're going to copy our webhook. We're going to put that in there. Our swing high low data alert name. Let's Now, trading you can send our data to Trade Lab. We're going to bring this over here and drag it, cut, or drop it. Oops, I missed. Drag and drop. Again, we're going to change this to strategy trade setting symbol. So this is so you can use it on any any coin, multiple coins, whatever you want. Variable time frame. We're going to do show your variable swing high one equal to custom alert swing high one variable swing high two equal to custom alert. Swing high to swing low on almost custom alert swing and search for. Alert. Swing load. Now we'll get rid of these. I'm going to copy this to the other side also so it's constantly being looked at. So these, when this alert comes in and there is a value in these plots, it will change these variables to that number. Now we need these variables, swing high, swing high one and swing high two, to make just swing high have a value. So in order to do that, we're going to make a rule. So we're going to do an entry rule. It says it strategy variable swing high one. 
greater than zero. And with set strategy variable swing high to strategy variable swing high one. Now it's giving us our value. This is what we're going to use for our uh, stop losses. So oh, this will be swing high one. So we're going to copy this to the other side. We're also going to copy it below. And we're going to call this swing high two. We're going to change this variable to swing high two. If it's greater than zero, we want swing high be equal swing high two. And we're going to copy this over there. We're going to copy it below again. And we'll call it swing low one. Now we want strategy variable swing low one is greater than zero. We want it to make strategy variable swing low equal to that number. And we'll copy the other side. We want this always updating in case we get out of a trade and it wants to enter another one. So we'll copy this below and we'll change this to swing low two. So your variable swing low two is greater than zero. We want swing low to equal. So now our variables will constantly update. Next alert, we will need price. So for that, we're going to use price closes and we want it to track the price all the time. And what I've learned that in price closes, the close, plot bar close is the current price all the time because it's constantly tracking up and down. It's saving the high, it's saving the low, it's saving when it opens, but the close is the current price. And that is, if you go off of here, plot open is plot zero, high is one, low is two, and close is three. So we want to track this price. So we are going to make an alert for price closes. Call this current price. Make a new template, call this price. We are going to use these again. Do not need all of these. We just need plot three. Call this price. That a number, make a dynamic, and plot number three. Again, this is coming from strategy variable, or matching to strategy label variable and time frame. So we're going to place price closes indicator. and make an alert for plot. It'll be the first one, plot bar open. Do that. Open greater than negative five, and we'll do one. So it's always updating price data and we will save. And we need a variable for price.
save that. And we'll save, quit. We'll come back just to make sure that we can get all this stuff working right now. Your alerts. I am going to drag current price over here. Do the same thing we did before. We are going to change this to symbol, strategy variable label, strategy variable time. And now we're going to make strategy variable price equal to custom alert. Copy that. Let's see. Need anything else besides our entry? I think those are all our data alerts. Oh, I guess we should create that right now, too. Do our webhook first. Pop our open. Greater than. Read five. Minute. Be our name, which is current price. And our message. Create. Now we should be getting data fairly quickly. But we need our buy and sell signals, and then we can make our rules. So our buy and sell signals are going to come from UT bonds. UT long, UT short. Easy enough. So make our alert. We'll call this UT. This one, you do buy. We don't need any of these because it's just going to be a straight signal. We're not saving anything. Label time frame UT by okay. Place UT by indicator. And make an alert. Or for long, I think it was. Well the UT yeah, UT long. You know what I need to do is have the settings in here in case you guys copy this. So UT bots change. E value to And the ATR period Save that. Now here, since this this is just simple buy and sell, we're going to copy this. Then we can go in here and just change this to sell.
So I'll save it. Okay. So we don't enter a trade prematurely. I am going to not make that alert until we're done. But I'm going to drag and drop this over here. I'm going to do the same with this. So we got our buy and sell alerts. We're also going to change these just like we did the other ones. We'll make G trade setting symbol, variable label, strategy variable time frame, same thing, symbol, label. Now, when this alert comes in, and before I forget, because I forget this a lot, we're going to set trade setting side to buy. That's very important. You don't want to enter a short when you want to enter a long, so that's going to be the first thing that happens. But we do have to make new rules or add some confluence. Okay. So if we look at our notes, this is going to be our long. We need black flag data. We need fib one greater than trailing stop. So we have that in our variables over here. Fib one value, trailing stop value. Uh, we're going to check and make sure why that stuff isn't updating. We'll change that as we need to. So we're going to come here. We're going to go strategy variable. Long is fib1. Strategy variable fib1. Change this to a greater than symbol. Strategy variable trailing stop. So that needs to be true. Then... We need for a long price, strategy variable, current price, be greater than fib1. These two things have to be true when we get a, a buy signal to enter a trade. I believe those are... Oh, oh, we also need, oh, we didn't do the, do the volatility histogram. Yes. Uh, that's not updating yet. Let's see why. We create the alert. It's gone off. Oh, only once. That's why. Make sure you do once per minute. Actually, I wonder if we want to do this once per par close. This also needs to be negative five once per minute. Yeah, we'll do once. Okay. Now this should be. So what do we say in our rules? We wanted the histogram for a long to be greater than 69. Scram. Greater than 69. And we want the strategy variable histogram to be less than. ninety. Also want that histogram greater than the yes. SM. There we go. Now we have all our confidence. Fib one's got to be greater than trailing stop. Price has got to be greater than Fib one. Histogram. These these are all going to be the same in our shorts. The things that are going to be different are we're going to want five fib one less than trailing stop and price less than fib one. So we could do that right now. So strategy variable fib one we want less than 
Je vais arrêter ça. Et... Stretch variable. Price. Less than. Get one. Now again, just like up here, we want a histogram greater than 60. Strategy variable histogram less than 90. And we want the histogram to be greater than yes or no. Okay. Now, when that happens, we want to. So, for long, we want it to set the side to buy because all of our. All of our things have lined up here. I'm praying. Let's see if we get this updating here momentarily. Uh, okay. So we want to. We're gonna need a couple more variables because we got to do some math. So I'm gonna. I'm going to. Hold on, let me save just for good measure and quit. There we go. Now we got our price, SMA value, histogram, pip one, all our all our stuff is coming in now. So for this, we're going to need to make some stop and take profit lines. So we're gonna do a stop loss and make this a USD exact price. Next, we close the position, market order, to save that, but we're also going to add a take prop. Just one, so we're going to do it on a USD exact price, but it's going to be close position and on a limit order. Okay, so we get a stop line, take line, we're going to save this. So, we are going to first set our stop line on a long to our swing low. Set strategy line, stop line, price to strategy variable. That's going to be our stored number. Now is where math comes. So we're going to make a couple other variables. If I remember correctly, we're going to need two different ones because long and shorts are different. We'll do numbers. We'll call one temp math. And we'll make another one call. Usually you have to have a current price. Okay. So when we do this, in order to get one and a half times the current price, we have to subtract the current price from the stop price. So we're going to want to set temp math equal to the current price, which is strategy variable price. Then we are going to subtract the bigger numbers. Temp. And whenever you do math, it stores the number in the variable to the left. So we'll sub subtract temp math from strategy variable swing low. That will now store that number in temp math. You're going to need to multiply temp math times 1.5. Now temp math is that number. And you're going to add the 
tell me. Two. Add your variable price. We're going to set now that that number is stored there. Strategy variable variable take line. Not strategy variable. Strategy line take line price equal to strategy variable temp. That is how you get 1.5 times the risk. So when this happens, we are going to place the order. And we should be good. So this is going to be a little different because now our stop loss is a bigger number than our entry price. So we're going to set our, let's see, first set our stop loss. Stop line price equal to strategy variable swing high. We'll set temp math. Strategy variable swing high. Set strategy variable current price equal to price. Okay. Now we are going to subtract temp math. Minus. All right. Judge your variable price. That will store that number here. Then we are going to subtract. Oh, wait, we're going to mul multiply strategy variable temp math times 0.5. We're going to subtract strategy variable current price minus that number. And then we are going to set strategy variable or I'm sorry, strategy take line price equal to our strategy variable current price. And we're going to place it. That is it. So now we're not looking for any other signals to exit the trades. This is just a very simple buy and sell. We've got our math being done. We have all of our numbers coming in currently. Oh, current price is not. So we're going to make sure that we did that correctly. Just say, make the alert. Our price, strategy real price equal. In trading view, current price came through 12. Daily way. Pop our open. Mm -hmm. so, so quit and see if it just. No currents. Look at my alert. Current price. Your variable price. Maybe you'll try calling this eighty bucks. So. 
Oh, they want to probably have to change that now in trading view. Eighty price. I miss it. Yo. Price, price. We'll see if that updates here in a minute. <clears throat> okay, so where was I? Oh, I need to figure out. Oh, we also need to make the alerts for the entry and exit. So, how about for testing purposes, we do two percent, ten x. We'll just see how it gets. Save that. Make our alerts for buy and sell. We've got to also remember when you first create this, the swing high and swing low is going to have a zero until something populates. So we will add, actually, before I even make an alert, just in case we get a signal. We'll look at our data window, and we'll see. Swing level twenty seven ninety six. Oh, it's in there. So we got a swing low. We do not have a swing high. Let's see what our last swing high was. Twenty ninety seven. Okay. Now, in case we get a buy or sell signal, we've got our information in here and it's accurate. Still, I want to make sure. Here. Volume. I may have my web hook wrong. Price step, price. Let's see what's going. Bye. Mm -hmm. Populated. It's not going to occur. Price is going to price. It has been populating. Never mind me. I was looking at my uh, math one. Okay, we're good. So, okay. Let's make our buy and sell. UT buy. So long. What's for bar close? Do our web. Bye. Message. Okay. Now we're going to do our 
our cell. It's going to be the same web. Once per bar clips. Yeah, you know what? I want this to tell me when that. I'm going to change that in this alert also. Notify on app. Okay. There's our strat. Built. Should be good to go. Had a brain fart there, looking looking at the wrong thing. Two two prices, but everything is coming in correctly. Uh, I'm going to go ahead up here and share it. Call this. Great. Trade up. Oops. I'm going to allow you to copy it, allow you to follow it. Uh, we had some uh, P&L issues in one of the, <laughs> the ribbon one and five strategy that I built. It looks like it's down $40,000. That is not the case. It's down like 40 cents. But uh, don't be freaked out by that. But use at your own risk regardless. Um, I'm not saying any of this stuff works. I'm just showing you how to build it. Um, I will put the videos and stuff in here. I will create a picture all that happy stuff I'm going to save this you can go to the community browser find it there you go right there remember that if you want to trade for free or have trade lab for free uh all you have to do is use bitget for your exchange which is what i just built this on um totally free if you want to use other other uh, exchanges, you you get unlimited bots, unlimited alerts, unlimited everything for forty nine dollars a month. Uh, like, share, and subscribe this video, and follow. And I will be back at least once a week with a new video strategy setup. And pretty soon we'll go through these and see what the actual win rates are. So here's that. $40,000. That is not true. Definitely did not lose that money. Th thank God. That would be scary. But uh, you can click on these and you can see the videos of how I built them also. And I guess that's it from now. And I will see you guys in the next video.